So you've got this little monster of a CPU, but you want to undervolt it to get more performance, more FPS, lower temperature, even though this thing already runs pretty cool, lower power consumption, and even lower noise in your system. Well, this is the right video for you. So welcome back at Unvolting PSUs. And today I'm going to show you exactly how to do that. Few disclaimers before we start. This is going to work for every single motherboard in the market. Okay, it doesn't matter which chipset you have. Today I'm using an MSI B650 Gaming Plus, so the older generation motherboard, you can use that, an X670, an X670E, and you can also use the brand new B840, B850, and X870, and of course the X870E, doesn't matter. You also don't need a specific cooler for this kind of tutorial to work, and we're gonna be doing all that in the BIOS of your motherboard. Now, I'll be trying to tell you different names, so if you have a different brand of motherboard which has slightly different names for the settings, you can still understand. However, if you cannot understand, I advise you to go in my CPU undervolting playlist and cross-reference with the other Ryzen undervolting videos where I use motherboards from other brands like Asus, Azrock, etc. So you can dial down your settings. Before we start, promise me one thing, okay? So if the video ends up being helpful, you will drop a like and subscribe to the channel so that you can help me to make more of these videos. I basically want to cover every single CPU and GPU on the market and show you how to overclock and undervolt every single one of them. So with that said, let's go into the BIOS. Let's start tweaking. Here we are in the BIOS. Now the first thing we want to do is go into the advanced mode, which in my motherboard is F7, sometimes is F2 or F5. And we want to go in the overclocking section, which may be called tweaker, AI tweaker, overclocking or different variation depending on the brand of your motherboard. Now, once we are here, the first thing we want to do, even though this is not really undervolting, is we want to enable our XMP or the EXPO on your RAM. Now, hopefully you have 6,000 megahertz RAM. In case you don't have 6,000 megahertz RAM or in case you wanna tweak your RAM further to get more performance, I do have a dedicated AM5 RAM overclocking tutorial on the channel, which I will put up here in case you wanna go and take a look. Now, once we've done this simple thing, we then want to go into settings and advanced. So every single AMD motherboard in the advanced tab is gonna have the AMD overclocking option. It's gonna be called the same in every motherboard. Now, in my motherboard, if you take a look, I also have it into the overclocking section. If I go in advanced CPU configuration, I then have AMD overclocking, but I'm gonna do it via the way where everybody has it, okay? So go here, it's gonna give you a warning, accept the warning, and now you wanna go into precision boost overdrive. One more disclaimer, I'm gonna first give you one setting in case you want to copy it and just close the video quickly and don't want to waste your time then if you want to stay i'm going to give you a static setting as well and also show you how you can tune this specifically for your own cpu because every single cpu is different so first setting the one for everybody dynamic now we want to go into precision boost overdrive hit enter select advanced and now we want to go all the way down to curve optimizer on Curve Optimizer, you wanna go all cores, negative, and now put 20. And now the undervolting per se is already finished. So if you just wanted to know like how much to set it, this is it. You can drop a like, subscribe, close the video. But if you wanna stay, there are a few important things still. So first off, this is gonna be stable for 99% of CPUs. I've tested quite a lot of 9000 series CPUs already, which is why this tutorial came out a bit late. If you are very, very unlucky, and I'm talking like 1% of CPUs unlucky, and this is crashing for you, you wanna put 10. But with 10, you're gonna have less benefits, okay? On the other hand, if you're in the 1% luckiest CPUs alive, you're gonna be able to do 30. Now, of course, you can also go in between, maybe get a 15 and maybe get a 25. But if you wanna just set it and forget it, put 20. And if you see it crashing and you don't want to waste your time, put 10. If you want to give it a shot, try 30. Okay, so this is it for the voltage dynamic wise. But now, um, if you're doing this for temperatures, you just want to do this. But if you're doing this for performance, there is one other important settings which we need to change. Now to get the other setting, we want to go into the overclocking tab. And now to have this setting enabled, you need to have the latest BIOS in your motherboard, okay? This is very important. AMD released a new BIOS with an extended TDP option, 105 watts. So we wanna enable that mode. 
Now, it's going to be a bit different depending on your motherboard, but in my motherboard, it is an advanced CPU configuration, and you want to look for something that's called TDP. Okay, I'm also going to show you how you can do it in the advanced options, but it's a bit more, you know, tricky. So, you want to hit enter, and if you're doing this for just performance, you want to put the highest possible number. If you're doing this just for temperature and efficiency, for some reason, you want to put the lowest possible. So, in my case, 170 is what I would put. Now, it doesn't mean your CPU is going to go to that wattage. It just means it can. Now, the one AMD added, which is basically extended stock, is the 105 right here, OK? Now, in case you cannot find this, I'm going to show you how to put it by yourself. Can you see here? It basically says PPT, TDC, EDC, basically. So if you go where we were before in advanced AMD overclocking, and we go into PBO, you can then put your PBO limits to manual. And into here, you can basically copy uh, what we were doing before. So put the same wattage and current limit. In, so basically 105, etc. Okay, in case you want to copy them. So this is it. Now, dynamic option is the one I recommend to 99% of you guys. But in case you want to do a static overclock, well, static undervolt technically, to bring your CPU without all those things which we've done before. Well, you just want to put PBO on disable, and we want to go back and basically go in the overclocking tab and do it the old school way. So the old school way is basically, if you take a look here, vCore, 1.3 volt, the default voltage for your CPU is around 1.3, 1.35 volts. Now, if you do the dynamic option, basically under load, it's going to be around 1.09, 1.1, roughly. But if we don't want our CPU to go up and down, and we want it to be just locked, so we don't have dips in frames, and so it's going to be better in productivity, we can do it. So we go in overclocking, we go in CPU ratio, or core ratio, and we put 50 in it. Then we go all the way down, still in the overclocking tab, until we find something that's called CPU core voltage or CPU voltage, or vCore, again, depending on your motherboard. And now here, you want to put override mode, which is also called manual, and you want to put 1.1. And this is my tested safe voltage. Now here, again, like I told you before, this is going to work for 99% of CPUs. But if you're very, very, very unlucky, you have to raise it this time, not lower it. So if your CPU is crashing, you want to try 1.15. On the other hand, if you feel very lucky, you may go all the way down 1.050, but you need to be like too lucky for this to work. If you're a bit lucky, you're going to have 1.075 working pretty much. The lower the voltage, the lower the temperature, the better it's going to run, but it's going to be harder to achieve stability. Now, if you want to get an even lower voltage, you can lower this one to maybe 49, for example, which is stock. 49 is stock. Or, on the other hand, if you feel lucky, but temperature-wise you're fine with 1.1, you can, for example, try 51 to get even more performance and see if it's stable. Honestly, I wouldn't really go higher than 52 if you're after efficiency, but if you just want to get performance, you can go all the way up to 56 by raising this one, even all the way up to 1.3. But this you have to really test out, and it's not really an undervolt, it's more of an overclock, really. And with this, I think we covered basically anything I can tell you about these CPUs. So please remember your promise. If the video was helpful, drop a like and subscribe. And also the build I'm using here, it's on the channel in case you want to check it out. And I have many more tutorials for GPUs, RAM, whatever you can think about. And uh, really, I hope to see you guys again. I hope the video was helpful, and uh, I wish you a very good day. Bye-bye.